Here we are with Frida, who is our second year PhD student in physics, and we're here to hear all about her research. So Frida, first of all, how did you get interested in physics? Um, well, I did physics in high school, in year 12, and I found it really interesting. Um, my teacher was very inspirational. She really encouraged us to kind of uh, explore and understand, and there were only like three girls in my class. I went to all girls schools. So I thought I started off actually in engineering, and I found it not boring, but I really needed to understand why things work the way they did. I really wanted to get into the maths of it, and so I transferred to a science degree, and I just became really kind of riveted by maths and physics. And as I kept going, I thought, no, I want to do more physics. And then I finished third year, and I thought, no, I want to do more physics. And I did honours, and then I found my way in a PhD, and here I am. That's great. So um, was it easy enough to transfer from engineering to physics? Yeah, it was very easy. I just spoke to a career counsellor, and she said, I think this is what you should be doing. And it was very easy. So you, you had um, some units that you had taken in the first year that enabled you to transfer or you started from scratch? Um, I could transfer some of it. It was a little bit difficult, like I had to make it up over a few years, but it worked out well in the end. Everyone was very supportive of that decision. So That's great. Yeah. And what's your project about? Um, well, currently I'm working on a new way of analysing optical fields, or well, any fields, but I'm using X-ray optics. I use um, the complex plane or the argand plane to like add insight into the way the phase behaves in an optical field. Um, and I'm going to be applying that to phase contrast imaging, um, looking into um, uh, X-ray images of lungs to try to see if what I do can improve those imaging techniques. And is it mostly theoretical or um, is it experimental as well? Um, well, I, I see myself mainly as a theorist but I do some collaboration, I do some work in experiments with people just because I really wanted to branch out and um, do a little bit of experimental work, but mainly what I do on a daily basis involves pen and paper or uh, simulations with computers. That's great. And you're also a mother. I am. How do you find, <laughs> how old is your boy? He's 10 months old. So how do you find juggling motherhood and studying? Oh, well, it's taken a lot of time. Um, I think in, at, in the beginning, I thought I could just kind of go into it, and um, slowly I realised that it's a bit more complicated than that, just kind of mentally adjusting. You know, I'm a mother and then I'm a scientist, and juggling that mentally has been challenging. So it just takes a lot of time to kind of get used to that. But it's been fine. It's been, it's been interesting, actually, and I'm kind of growing through that um, as a scientist and gen as a general human being. <laughs> And, and it's fine. Yeah. So, so you, work, you, you work on your PhD part-time? I, I actually did it full-time for a little bit, um, but I realised it, uh, it was just too difficult, so I'm part-time now. After your son was born, you tried to do it full-time, but very brave. <laughs> so how do you That's find um, support from your supervisors and the school in general? Amazing, fantastic. My supervisors, well, one of them um, has young children, so he's very, very understanding, but patient, understanding, and I've never heard one negative word or... Um, no impatience because sometimes I am a little bit slow and sometimes I don't get around to doing much and everyone has been so supportive, the school has been so supportive, I'm working around my schedule and um, I can uh, do Skype meetings or even phone meetings if I can't get in and the experience has been overwhelmingly positive. That's great. Thank you for sharing all this with us. Pleasure.